present in our history. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. We remember all you've done. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. We've seen your grace at work in us. We're reminded of your steadfast love. Here we stand. God, we are so thankful. Looking back. We know you've been faithful We're expecting for the future We believe the best is yet to come
But before that, let's just pray for one another, shall we? Father, we thank you that once again we can come into your presence. We can come into your presence where your word says there is a fullness of joy and there are pleasures forevermore at your right hand. Father, what a wonderful thought that is. And Father, we pray that that might be what each person this morning who is watching this service might feel. They might feel your very presence. Because that's a wonderful thing. And may you, Father, just come and touch each person in a very special way. Father, we know there'll be some people watching who aren't very well. And Father, we pray your hand of healing might be upon them. There'll be others watching who are just inquisitive, what's all this about? Father, we pray that you might reveal yourself to them as only you can. And now we just pray a blessing upon ourselves as we go through this little time together, that it might be a time when you speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Just a few notices SJ and I will go through, as we always do, yes. Has Jesus been saying anything to you this week? Have you had an experience of Jesus this week that, well, you'd love to share with other people? You know, Jesus does unique things with each one of us. And some of them are done to encourage you. Some of them encourage the rest of us. So if you'd like to share that with us, we'd be only too pleased to let you share that with us and we can broadcast it for you. So please send it in to Pastor in a few minutes. We'll put his email address on the, on the screen for you. It's always a huge encouragement to other people to hear your testimony. So that's cool. Um, so the prayer line we have and the pastor's emails are now on the bottom of the screen. If you, have, uh, if you want us to pray for you, for a situation, for a person, then contact the prayer line if you've got any other comments. Or testimonies if you put them to Ian's uh, email address that would be great and it would be lovely to hear from you. It would indeed, that's right. I thought when, I, when SJ went like that I was going to get a right cross across my nose but fortunately she can't reach me, we are at social distance so that's fairly good. Now the next thing on here is just to say Watch this space. Is that the right one? Have I got the wrong one? I've got the wrong one. It's alright, you can do that and I'll do the other one. You'll do the other one, okay. Uh, watch this space. Alpha <gasps> is coming soon. And coming soon to anybody, and that could be you, who might want to know more about the meaning of life. That's what Alpha Course is all about. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll throw out some dates and let you know what those dates are. We'll give you the details of how you can join us in an in a online Alpha, so you haven't even got to come anywhere, you can do it from your front room, you can do it from your bedroom if you want to, but you can share time with a group of people, all exploring just what Christianity, believing in Jesus, is all about. And I never realised how difficult it was to do things with gloves on before. I was just thinking that, I've got a hair tickling my nose and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> I'm just going to have to put up with it. <laughs> Now, this pandemic, although for us it looks like it's coming to an end, in the rest of the world mm. it, it isn't. It's still got a grip on a lot of nations. So if you have um, any prayer requests to do with the pandemic, or if you're worried about coming out of lockdown, because mm. it is quite scary to suddenly see lots of people on the street and think, oh, I don't know how, you know, I don't feel safe. But if you've got anything that we can help you with, again, get in touch with Ian Roberts and we can try and help you the best we can. I'd just like to pray for India at this moment. Mm. Because, you know, it is horrific what's going on out there on a humanitarian basis. And so let's just bow our heads and just ask the Lord to be in there. Dear Lord Jesus, we see these horrific scenes upon our television screens of people in the streets, in the back of ambulances. We see the corpses. We see what this pandemic is doing to that massive country. And Father, we pray that somehow, Lord, you might bring this to an end. And that, Father, you might be with those dear folk there. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're watching this and you think, well, this is a fun sort of thing to watch and you'd like to share it, then share it. Or by whatever means you can. The more people will hear about Jesus, the better, as far as we're concerned. Absolutely. 
absolutely, absolutely. Now, next week, we don't know what the preacher's going to be on now, that's exciting. Uh, Ron Spillard, our great friend here at Wysham, is going to be coming and sharing with us. And so, um, yeah, it, just watch this space and see what happens. Exciting. It's always exciting to not know. Yes. Something. And yeah, sometimes it can be a bit in the back end too. Yes. But with Ron, you're quite safe. Yeah. Because Ron is someone who's very experienced at telling people about Jesus. He is, in fact, one of those people that I'll be talking about later on. Mm. Wait and see. Now, today I'm continuing the series in John's Gospel. And we're in chapter 5. So we're a quarter of the way through. In fact, we're over a quarter of the way through. Because remember, we did a few at Easter as well at the end of the book. I won't be going back to those again. So we're over a quarter of the way through John's Gospel now. So if you have your Bible with you, or if you have it on your app on your phone, then I suggest you might like to open the app, open your Bible, to ch John chapter 5, and read it with us. There's nothing like reading the Bible for yourself, because that's the way often that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, through his written word. Now, I'm going to pray our usual prayer, and then SJ is going to read John chapter 5 and the first 15 verses to us. And then after that, we're going to see a short clip of the Jesus film just showing us in the film as they saw it, this day same story. So we'll read it and we'll see it and then we'll talk about one or two aspects of it afterwards. Uh, just to say, the last time we tried to show a clip from the uh, Jesus film, uh, YouTube banned it. So if you're watching on YouTube and it doesn't appear, we're very sorry, it's not our fault. <laughs> no, because we are allowed to share yes. it. For some reason, YouTube doesn't like it. <laughs> Never mind, that's YouTube's fault, not ours in that sense. Let's pray our prayer for today. Dear Father, please take the words of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus, and anoint them by your Holy Spirit to become living words, sharper than any two-edged sword, to reveal yourself to us today. Amen. Amen. So this is John chapter 5, verse 50, uh, verses 1 to 15. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem, near Sheep Gate, a pool in which, Ar which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, who used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralysed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, Someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath, and so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and the law forbids you to carry, it, carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick, up, pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who, he, who it was, but Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. <laughs> After this, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a religious festival. Near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, there is a pool with five porches. In Hebrew, it is called Besatha. A large crowd of sick people were lying on the porches. The blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. A man was there who had been sick for 38 years.
Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew that the man had been sick for such a long time. Do you want to get well? Sir, I don't have anyone here to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm trying to get in, somebody else gets there first. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. Immediately, the man got well. He picked up his mat and started walking. The day this happened was a Sabbath, so the Jewish authorities told the man who had been healed, this is a Sabbath, and it is against our law for you to carry your mat. The man who made me well told me to pick up my mat and walk. Who is the man who told you to do this? But the man who had been healed did not know who Jesus was. For there was a crowd in that place, and Jesus had slipped away. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple. You're well now. So stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Then the man left and told the Jewish authorities that it was Jesus who had healed him. So they began to persecute Jesus because he had done this healing on a Sabbath. Well, you may well still be wondering why we wore boxing gloves. Well, it all began, as far as I was concerned, when Anne, that's my wife, and I were praying I think it was last week, in the mornings, that we usually do first thing when we have our breakfast, we pray together. And we read a little piece of scripture, and Anne's prayer was something like this, Lord, you don't pull your punches, do you? And pulling a punch in boxing is when you don't go through with it, you stop, rather than hurt your opponent. Okay? So they're not direct punches, they're make-believe. And you know, this uh, problem is sometimes in Christian circles, we're almost in a land of make-believe, as opposed to in a land where real things happen. And Jesus lived in the real world. Now, on the 4th of June, 1964, that was you just about born then, SJ? She was three years old then. Well, I was 14, so you can now work out our ages, can't you? There was a man by the name of Cassius Clay, he was known as Cassius Clay in those days. He later became Muhammad Ali, a very, very famous boxer, and probably uh, one of the most intelligent boxers probably there ever been. But he came up with a statement just before he had to fight a man called the Bear. And his name was Sonny Liston. He was a big, big bear of a man. And I think my gloves off here because the screen disappears otherwise. Okay. He came up with this statement. He said. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. The hands that can't hit what the eyes cannot see. 
and he's referring to himself as being very quick and agile on his feet, so that Sonny Liston couldn't actually get a punch in because he was moving so fast. Whereas, when he was following Cassius Clay around the ring, because that's what he did, lumbering around, he was tiring himself out, and every now and then Cassius Clay would come in and mop him one and score the point. And Cassius Clay, the underdog, actually won the fight. Which was quite remarkable, really, because he wasn't expected to. But you see, he floated like a butterfly, but he stung like a bee. He didn't pull his punches. He had a very, very good punch indeed. <laughs> now, Jesus didn't pull his punches either. I put a little title on this talk about this, and I called it Jesus Modelling Being an Evangelist. Or Jesus, the Evangelist. Showing us how it is that we can talk to others about our faith. Now, in case you think that being an evangelist is not for me, and therefore you're being young, turning off, listen to what Paul wrote to his young son in the faith, Timothy, who we think was a rather timid young man, and perhaps he wasn't what you might call evangelistic material, nervous. Well, he said, you, he said, Timothy, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. He included evangelism in pastoral work, in teaching, in all the other works that go on in the church. Evangelism is key. We have to go out into all the world and tell the message of Jesus. Now, I've got five points here, and I hope if we can manage it, we'll put the heading of each of these points up on the screen so you'll see them as you go through them. The first one is God wants direct speaking. You know, direct speaking is like direct punching. I explained to SJ earlier that when you box, and I only know these because my father used to box in the RAF, he taught me the rules of boxing. He said, if you open your hand or you hit somebody with the inside of the hand, that doesn't count. You have to hit them direct. And believe you me, I box a little bit. When someone hits you direct, you feel it. There's an impact. And so when you speak directly to somebody, and sometimes you think, well, that's a bit insensitive being that direct in the way you speak. Well, that's sometimes the result. That's the, that's the result. Well, that's the one that gets the result. Now you see, Jesus said to this man, who'd been for 38 years, waiting to become well. He said to him, do you want to get well? Well, you might say that's the most stupid question you've ever asked somebody. Do you want to get well? Well, perhaps he'd been there so long that he got used to being ill. Perhaps he didn't want to get well. That's why I showed that video clip, because I showed him so well on that video, that this man really did want to get well. Even though he looked very hard at Jesus to think, what's he getting at? you getting at. You know, when you direct with somebody, you might say to them, do you want to be saved? Do you want to know what it's like to have eternal life with Jesus? Or as we used to say on the street, when we did some street work a few years ago, we used to say to them, if you were to die tonight, are you sure, are you absolutely sure you go to heaven? That's direct speaking. That's direct hitting. That's putting the punch bang on the jaw and saying, this is how it is. No mess. Of course, you might get an answer come back which says it's none of your business. Well, that's okay. That's up to them to say that. This man didn't say that, did he? He just looked. And Jesus saw in that look this man really did want to get well. Because what did he say to him? He said, I got no one to put me in to the pool, when the pool gets ruffled by those spirits as they believed it did. He was helpless. You know, Jesus, this man had no idea who Jesus was either. He didn't know he was a man going round doing miracles. He was just a man who happened to come alongside him. 
Perhaps the only man who spoke to him that day. And these were the only words he ever heard that morning. Do you want to get well? Well, what a message to, that, to say to that, to that person. You see, this man was lost. And for 38 years he'd been a loser. He had no idea how he was ever going to get well. You see, Jesus asked at exactly the right time. And when the Holy Spirit prompts us to talk to someone about our faith, it's always at exactly the right time. They're God appointments for people. And we are just instruments along the way to, to actually confront them. It wasn't until sometime later in the temple that this man found out who Jesus was. When Jesus came alongside him again after he'd been made well, after he was carrying his mat and said to him, see, you're well. He turned the words round he'd asked him in the beginning and said, see, you know well. Be careful you don't sin anymore in case worse things happen to you. You see, he was now in the temple where previously he'd been excluded from. And now he's able to go and worship God. And that was the beginning of this man's discipleship. Back in the fold of the church. And there's something about that when we meet people is to point them back to where they can find help to carry on being a disciple of Christ's. Otherwise the first state becomes the second state becomes worse than the first. When we cleaned everything out, suddenly the evil spirits will come in. We don't bring the Holy Spirit into someone's life and teach them how to go forward. The second point is this God wants to use us. All of us. The church is as strong as the number of people who want to take Jesus out to the people. I've got a favourite verse. My favourite verse is Romans 5.5, 5, which simply says this. He, that's God, delights to take the things or the people who are not and make them as though they are. He loves to take those who are not. That's me. I'm an Arnold. I'm not very well known by anybody. I'm just me. And you're just you. And you're saying, well, I'm nothing. Yeah, you're an Arnold. But to go back to the beginning of the verse, what did you say? God delights to take you. He delights to use you. He delights, he wants, it actually pleases the heart of God the Father that he can use you to help somebody else. So, God wants to use you. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? You know, by reading this text, we know this man didn't know Jesus until later, by name or by reputation. As far as he was concerned, he was an unknown man. You may well be unknown to somebody else, but you know, nobody is unknown to God. Isn't that lovely? He knows me, he knows you. And there may be family or friends that only you can reach. Are you willing to speak directly to them when the opportunity arises? Are you willing to be used? The third one is this. God wants you to be prepared. Ah, prepared, yes. Prepared. Prepared to talk to people. But not just bold enough to talk to them. What do you going to say to them? What have you got prepared? What have you got prepared up your sleeve, as it were? Now, there are three things that you can do. In fact, there are four, and we'll come to the fourth after this point, because we'll be the next point. So I'll talk about three now. Firstly, you can have your own experience of coming to Jesus handy. Your testimony. It's yours, it's yours alone. Only you have that testimony. I have written mine down. I've honed it so it can take no more than three minutes. So I've got a three minute version of my 60 years of walking with Jesus. It took some doing, but there are salient points, there are important points in my life that I must tell people about. And those are the ones I seek to get over in no more than three minutes. 
Go away after this. Write down in three minutes what Jesus has done for you. That's your destiny. Learn it. And then be prepared to give it. The second one is this. Always have handy some form of prayer that you can lead someone through to receive Jesus. There are no fancy words to use which have to be used. I often remember the very simple one I was taught as a child. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You know, Jesus knows exactly when the heart of a person is turning towards him. There's only one incident I'm reliably informed when we see the father actually running in scripture. It was when he ran towards the prodigal son. Isn't that a lovely picture? The moment that prodigal son wanted to come home, there was the father coming down the road towards him. That's my God. That is your God, and that's what he wants us to be prepared to do, is to turn that person towards God and leave the Holy Spirit to be in the midwife to do the rest. You might, on the other hand, know the Alpha prayer off by heart about sorry, please, and thank you. That's fine too. That's great. No problem. But be prepared to pray with them, to lead them into the presence of God, and the third thing is this, also always be prepared to offer a prayer for anyone who may be in need. And pray for them there and then. Don't say, I'll go away and pray for you. Say, can I pray for you now? Put your hand on them when we're allowed to. And just pray for them. Ask the Lord just to come into their situation right now. If it's for healing, ask for healing. It's amazing what God will do. Some of the most remarkable answers to prayer I've ever had when I've done something like that. And I walked away, and blow me the next day, they come to me and said, that shoulder you prayed for, look. And they turn their arm around like that. I thought, oh, wow, that's God. And that is my God. And it's your God too. But you have to take the risk. And the risk is faith. And that's stepping out and doing it. So, that's the three. Now, number four. This is the other thing you have to do. And the other thing you have to do is to ask the Holy Spirit. Ah, ask the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit who is always with us. He's with us all the time. Paul said, Christ in me, my hope of glory. It's the Spirit of Christ that lives in us. And he wants to help us in these situations as we act as evangelists just like Jesus did and so we can ask and say Lord what do I do with this person I don't know them what do they need can you drop a word into your mind it might be a word like donut donut and you're in the middle of Monmouth and you look up and you well, there's a across there and you say do you find some donuts and a coffee and take them have a donut and a coffee but act upon what comes into your heart and the other thing ask for discernment for understanding Understanding of this person. And sometimes that means we have to listen with both ears. One ear to the Holy Spirit and one ear to the person we're talking to. So we act as the conduit between the two, as it were. And it's wonderful to know that God, in his wonderful divine grace, uses even us to help bring people into the kingdom of God. That's my Jesus. Now, in that we find that God, you know, is keener than we are to find someone else into his kingdom. You never know how keen God is to bring someone to the kingdom until he brought someone into the kingdom. And you realise just what happens. Because our fifth point is this. God wants you, you, to lead someone to Jesus. And to start a party in heaven. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible tells us. For every sinner that repents, the angels in heaven, they go, woo, 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 a party in heaven. And I tell you, those parties go on for some time. You know, when we know someone's said the sinner's prayer, we think, oh, that's great, that's wonderful. 
But when you've led someone through that yourself, I tell you, there is no feeling on this earth like it. To know that you've got someone else with you in eternity, forevermore. You have done something which the Lord Jesus, our Lord, our Saviour, has asked us to do, to tell someone else about him. Do it. Will you do it? Will you do it? Now, returning to my boxing gloves. When I did a little bit of boxing, it wasn't very much. I'll tell you why it wasn't very much. There were two reasons why I didn't like boxing. One was because I got hurt. And I tell you, when someone lands a punch on you, it hurts. And what's more, I didn't like hurting the other person. So I was tended to pull my punches. I didn't want to see them blood all over their face so they hit them on the nose, or whatever. And you know, that's what sometimes speaking it for Jesus is like. We don't want to be hurt when they say, that's not for me, there's no such thing as God, I don't believe it all, I'm an atheist. And you feel rebirthed. And nor do we want to hurt their feelings by being too direct. My father used to say to me when he said, if you ever do any boxing, Frank, the first thing you do is make sure you hit your opponent harder than they can hit you. And then you stand a chance of beating him before he can hurt you. And you, know, that's why I talk about direct speaking. That's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't pull his punches. Do you want to get well? question to a man who's been ill for 38 years. Do you want to be saved? You might ask to a person who's been in church every week all their lives. But maybe has never found Jesus as their saviour. Or somebody on the street that you meet, you think, randomly, but it's a God appointment. And he made that appointment for you to be with them, to bring him to them. If Jesus didn't pull his punches, I hope you would either. I'm just going to pray now. I'm going to take my gloves off because they're getting a bit sticky and hot. And I don't need to have gloves on when I pray. And I'm going to pray, first of all, I'm going to pray through the Alpha Prayer. Because I've got it written down. Just so that if anyone out there, anyone listening in, doesn't know Jesus as Saviour, but you've been touched this morning by the Holy Spirit, find out more. Then just pray this along with me. We're just going to use those three simple words which simply says sorry, please and thank you. And I'll take it very slowly and I'll give you a chance in the, in the middle to think of those things that you may have done wrong and offended God with which you can put your own words in. So let's just go through it together. Dear Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my wrongdoings that have offended you. And just think there of some of those things in particular that you need to just bring before God and say, please, I am sorry for this. Please take them away through your sacrifice upon the cross. Thank you. I believe you have now saved me for eternity. I want to be your follower from here onwards. Amen. If you pray in that prayer, hallelujah, you're now nearer the kingdom of God than you were before. And the Lord Jesus is just racing towards you with open arms. If you'd like to share that with anybody, share it with someone in the room if there's someone with you now. If not, pass us the address you've had. Drop him an email. Just tell him that you found Jesus this morning. He'll be as happy as can be just to hear that. Now let's pray for the rest of us, because we are evangelists, all of us. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you might 
open our mouths and make us bold before you. Help us to be direct in our speech. Help us to ask the Holy Spirit to help us and help us to be prepared with our testimony, with words of prayers that we can give people and be willing to pray for them. That Father, we might be able to start another party in heaven as someone else comes into the kingdom of God. So bless each person this morning who is watching this, that they might be truly blessed by the living God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you very much for listening to that. Now before we go, I'd just like to say before we sing our final hymn, how good it's been to wear boxing gloves this morning. I hadn't realised how much I fidget with my hands. And you don't realise this, do you? And sometimes, you know, it's good to do things differently and to think differently. That's why it's good to go away and be prepared for something. I have a final prayer which is part of the Bible to read to you and to just say over us this, mo this morning because I believe this is a prayer that, well, I think God would want to hear it from us. It comes from the book of Hebrews, if you ever want to go and look it up. But it says this, Now may the God of peace equip us with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. As we come to sing our final song, which is Still God, by Elim Sound, we're so grateful for Elim for putting these out for us to use. Still God, I wonder if these words could almost have been penned by that man, by that pool. Still God, after 38 years, he found God. Isn't that remarkable? May you have a blessed week. May you know God by your side, in your heart, and along the way, and that you might really be blessed as you seek to take him to your family, to your friends, and to people you meet. God bless you. Darkness seems to have no dawn I'm hanging by a thread The fabric of my faith is torn I'm holding on to you I'm holding on to you When hurt is closing in Pain seems to hide you from my view I need to hear your voice I need you Lord, I need a breakthrough I'm holding on to you I'm holding on to you You still got, you still hope, you still lie In these bones I will praise you I will praise you You still got, you still hope, you still lie In these bones I will praise you I will praise you The sun will rise I'll choose to set my sights on you And when my vision clears I'll see the mountains that you moved You were holding on to me You were holding You still got this thing.
to me yeah. You still got, you still hold